Hey, this is Mr. Janes, and in this video we're going to be talking about transversals. As always, make sure that you pause the video or rewind when you need to to try a practice problem or miss something that I said earlier. Um, and when you take notes, you can use the note sheet, a blank piece of paper, and you don't have to copy down everything I copy down. You can write down things I say or anything that might help you remember the information. So, let's start. First, what is a transversal? Well, a transversal is one line that intersects two or more other lines. So if you'd like to, pause the video here and try and circle which of these lines are transversals in these four pictures. All right, so now that you've tried, here is a transversal. This line here is another transversal. It's cutting through or intersecting two other lines. This right here is also transversal. Okay, This time it's cutting through three lines, and this right here is also transversal. Now, like I said, transversals can cut through two lines, uh, like in this one, okay? Or they can cut through three or more lines, like over here. A transversal, like this one, can cut through two parallel lines. Or a transversal, like this one, can cut through two lines that are not parallel to each other, that will intersect eventually. So, like I said, transversals can cut through two lines that are parallel or not parallel. So, we've got a parallel example here and a non-parallel example here. However, if the lines are parallel, there are certain theorems that we can use to do algebra problems. And we'll talk about this on the next page. But before we get there, we need to learn some special vocabulary terms. So we're going to use these two figures to fill in the vocabulary terms on the bottom of your page. Okay? So the first two vocabulary terms we've already learned before, vertical angles and linear pair. Let's look at our diagram. All right and give an example of some vertical angles. Right here, you've got angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. And vertical angles are across the intersection from each other, just like that. So those are vertical angles. So let me write down an example. Uh, angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. If you'd like to, pause the video here and try down some more examples of vertical angles. Here are some more examples of vertical angles that you might have written down. 4 and 2, 5 and 7, and 8 and 6 in our diagram are all vertical angles. For example, here's 8, here is 6, they're across the intersection from each other, they're vertical angles. And it works also on this diagram. 8 and 6 are across from each other, they are vertical angles. So whether they're parallel or not, they're still called vertical angles. Now let's draw a quick drawing so we remember what vertical angles look like. I like to draw two cross lines, okay, and kind of highlight those vertical angles. And we have a special theorem that we can use with vertical angles. If you have two parallel angles, or sorry, if you have two vertical angles and the lines are parallel, then the two vertical angles are congruent. They equal each other. But we already knew that. Let's write it down. Angle 1 would equal angle 3. Okay. We also know about linear pair. A linear pair are any two angles that are adjacent to each other on the same intersection that add to 180 degrees. So for example, angle 1 and angle 2 are a linear pair. Or you could say that angle 5 and angle 8 are a linear pair. Again, it works if even if the lines aren't parallel. So 1 and 2 are a linear pair. They add up to 180 degrees. They're supplementary. And, um, and 5 and 8, those are a linear pair. They're supplementary. They're adjacent. They add up to 100 and 80 degrees. So let's write those down in our examples. Angle 1 and angle 2, and angle 5 and angle 8 are a linear pair. Go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can write down a couple more examples of linear pairs. Here are just a couple examples of linear pairs, but there are a ton more on the diagram, so don't worry if, if you have different ones. To draw a linear pair, we can think if we've got an, an intersection of two lines. A linear pair are two angles that are adjacent, so perhaps this angle and this angle right here. And we already knew this, that if you have a linear pair, those two angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. So if I take angle 1 and angle 2 from my example, they should add together, add up to 180 degrees, because linear pairs are supplementary. What about alternate interior and alternate exterior angles? Well, let's take a look at the diagram. Well, the word alternate means that we're going to pick one angle from this side of our transversal, again, here's our transversal, okay. we're going to pick one angle 
from the other side of our transversal. That's what alternate means, alternate sides of the transversal. So alternate exterior angles are two angles that are on the opposite side and are on the outside of the exterior of these two parallel lines. So the exterior is out here. This is the exterior. So angles 1 and 7 might be called alternate exterior angles. Let's write that down. So angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles. We've written that down. Um, try and pause the video here and see if you can figure out another pair of alternate exterior angles. And hint, there is only one. Hopefully you guessed it. 2 and 8 are also alternate exterior angles because they are on the exterior of the two parallel lines and they're on opposite sides, alternate sides, of our transversal. So let's write those down. Alright, now that we've written them down, now we need a, a good kind of drawing or hint so we know what alternate exterior looks like. Well, if you draw your parallel lines and you have your transversal, then alternate exterior angles could be here and here, or I guess they could be, I'll draw a little, a little star here and here. Those are alternate exterior angles. And if you notice, alternate exterior angles look like they're about the same size. They look like they're kind of the same angle. And in fact, they are. If two lines are parallel, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. They're equal. So just like with vertical angles, we can say that alternate exterior angles, angle 1, equals angle 7. Now, alternate interior angles are very similar. Let's go back to the diagram. Again, alternate interior angles will be on alternate sides of this transversal, so on two opposite sides. Okay? Um, but now they're on the interior of our two parallel lines. Think of it almost like a sandwich or a, maybe a house that we're in the interior. Okay? And so alternate interior angles might be something like 6 and 4. Those are alternate on opposite sides of that, that purple transversal, and they're interior of those two green lines. In a second, I'll write that down, but before we do, can you guess what the other alternate interior angle is? It's going to be 3 and 5. See how they're on the interior of the two parallel lines, and they're on alternating sides of our transversal. Let's write those down. So we've got our alternate interior angles, 4 and 6 go together, and 5 and 3 go together. So again, let's write down a little reminder of what alternate interior angles look like. Okay, We've got our parallel lines and our transversal. And remember, they're interior and they're alternate, so those two could be alternate interior angles, or maybe maybe these two could be alternate interior angles, that one and, and that one. But as long as they're alternate and interior, you're good. And just like alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles are congruent. So something like angle 4 would equal angle 6. Those two angles are congruent, they're the same size. So what about same side interior or same side exterior? Well, you can probably guess that same side interior and exterior are kind of like the alternate interior and alternate exterior, but instead of being alternate, the angles are on the same side. Let's look at the diagram. So a same side would mean that here's our transversal, that the two angles are going to be on the same side, either both on this side or both on this side, as long as they're on the same side. And a same side interior, okay, same side interior, would mean that they are in the interior of these two parallel lines. Okay? So for example, 3 and 6 are same side interior. They're on the same side of that purple transversal, and they're on the interior of these two green lines. Can you find the other same side interior angles? Right, it's going to be 4 and 5. Again, they're on the same side of that purple transversal, and they're on the interior the interior of those two parallel lines. Let's go write that down and uh, draw a little picture to remind us. Right, so angle 3 and 6 were same side interior. Angle 4 and 5 were same side interior. So here's a little drawing to help remind us. Right, same side and interior. So maybe those two angles or this angle here and that angle there. Same side interior. And if you look at those two, those two angles, they don't look like they're equal anymore. They don't look that way. But they do look like, if you put them together, they might create a straight angle. They might add up to 180. In fact, they are. They are supplementary. So we can write down, if you have angle 3 
and you add angle 6, you should get to 180 degrees. That's it. Same side exterior angles are much the same, right? If you've got your transversal here, and you've got your, uh, your two parallel lines, again, they're going to be on the same side of that purple transversal, and on the exterior of those two green parallel lines. So 1 and 8 would be same side exterior. Can you find the other same side exterior? It's going to be 2 and 7. 2 and 7 are the other same side exterior angles. Let's go write those down and draw a picture. Right, so 2 and 7 are same side exterior angles. That's their pair. 1 and 8 are same side exterior angles. And let's uh, draw, the, draw a little diagram here. Again, same side, so, but exterior, outside of the parallel lines. So this little example here. Okay, And again, same side exterior angles are going to be supplementary. If you, have, uh, if you know what those angles are, um, and they're parallel, then they will add up to 180 degrees. So something like angle 1 plus angle 8 will add up to 180 degrees. We've got one more to talk about, and that's corresponding angles. Now, corresponding angles are a little different. If you look at one inter intersection, like this one, let's look at angle 1. And you look at the other intersection, at angle 5, those two are corresponding. They're both in the same position on each intersection. So like angle 1 is in the top left, and angle 5 is also in the top left. They're called corresponding angles. Can you figure out what the other pairs of corresponding angles are? Well, they would be 6 and 2 are corresponding angles. 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. 4, oops, four and 8 are corresponding angles. Let's go right down those pairs and draw us a little picture. All right, so here we've got our pairs of corresponding angles, 1 and 5, 2 and 6, 3 and 7, 4 and 8, and let's draw a quick diagram. And this is going to need a few extra colors. So these two are corresponding angles. This one and this one are corresponding angles. Again, they're both in the, the top uh, right side. Um, I guess this one here and this one here, they're both in the, the bottom right are corresponding angles. And uh, let's go yellow. This one here and this one here are corresponding angles. They're both in the, the bottom left. And if you look at those angles, you can kind of notice, hey, all those pairs look like they're the same size. And in fact, if the lines are parallel, they are the same size. They are congruent and they are equal. So I could say that something like angle 1 is equal to angle 5. That wraps up the vocab. Let's actually put these, uh, these words to use uh, and turn the page over. We can do numeric problems with transversals. You can actually determine all of the other angles in the figures below by knowing only one angle, but only if the lines are parallel to each other. So looking at this first one, it says that measure of angle 1 is 120 degrees. So let me label that 120. Well, what else can I label with that? Well, I know that angle 3 is a vertical angle, and that'll also be 120. Um, and I know that two, angle 2 is a, um, a linear pair, so that's 180 minus 120, that's 60 degrees. And since 4 is a, is a vertical angle, that, that'll also be 60 degrees. Now we just learned that angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles, and so they're going to be they're going to be equal. So 5 is also 120. 7, since it's a vertical angle, will also be 120. 6, because it's a linear pair, will be 60 degrees. And 8, again, it's a linear pair, it'll be 60 degrees. Do you kind of see a pattern going on here, almost like a checkerboard of how these all line up? Pause the video here and fill in these angles down below. All right, so hopefully we've written down uh, those angles there. Let's take a look at this next one. Pause the video here and try and figure out all the angles for this one and even the third one. Pause now. Right, so there's the answers to the second one. The third one is tricky because these lines aren't parallel. So not all those theorems from before hold. So if you haven't done the third one, pause it now and try it. So then when you look at number three, you can fill in these first four uh, angles, one through four, but actually you cannot fill in five, six, seven, or eight. That's because all the theorems that we learned on the previous page about alternate interior and corresponding only work if the lines are parallel. Since the lines here aren't parallel, you can't say anything about angles that are on a different intersection. So you just got to leave those blank. Nothing we can put there. 
So now that we've looked at three different numeric problems and found out that, in fact, we couldn't figure out the answer to 5, 6, 7, or 8 here because, again, they're not parallel, um, we can turn our attention to two more problems at the end that have to do with algebra. We can do algebraic problems with transversals. This is just like segment angle addition that we were doing uh, a week ago. But, and you need to determine the relationship between the two angles you're given. So let's take a look at the first one here. We've got this angle we're given, 10x minus 35, and this angle that we're given, 7x plus 10. First, let's think about what kind of relationship is that? Is it interior, exterior, what's going on? Well, if we look back at our notes, okay, we can see that those are corresponding angles, right? They're both in the, the kind of bottom, the bottom right of each of those intersections, the corresponding. And we learned that corresponding angles equal each other. They're always congruent as long as the lines are parallel. And those are parallel lines. See? So since they're congruent, we can set up an equation like this. 10x minus 35 equals 7x plus 10. You can pause the video here and try and work out the algebra for yourself. All right, let's see the answer. Okay, um, we can, what can we do here? We can subtract 7x from both sides, okay, uh, to get 3x minus 35 equals 10. We can add 35 to both sides, okay. Um, to get 3x equals 45, and we can divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 15. Okay, x equals 15. Now let me go back and plug in to find what the angles are. Um, let's see, 7 times 15 plus 10 is going to be 105, 115. And so it happens that this will also be 115, which makes sense. There are corresponding angles, and they should be congruent. Here's my answer. That's angle is a 115 degree angle. We can also use these two angles for number two. Okay, these two angles, remember, are let's check back. Okay, those are a linear pair, and a linear pair looks like those are supplementary. So go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can do the second one by yourself. All right, let's take a look at how it should look. Um, they're supplementary, so that means that 4x plus 25 plus 3x plus 15 should all sum up to 180 degrees, a nice straight angle. So we can combine like terms and get 7x plus uh, 40 equals 180. We can subtract 40 from both sides and get scroll down, 7x equals 140. We can divide both sides by 7 to get x equals 20. Okay, so the variable x equals 20. And when I plug it back in to these two um, expressions, I get that this one right here is 70 degrees. I get the other one is 105 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, 75 degrees, which works out because 105 plus 75 makes that nice uh, 180 degree straight angle. So I hope that you've learned a little bit about transversals. Next class we'll review how to do or how to work with the vocabulary, how to do numeric problems, how to do algebraic problems, and maybe something a little extra. All right, make sure you review uh, by rewinding to see any parts that you missed, and I'll see you next class.